today there are sort of four goals for this uh, webinar. We're going to think a little bit about engineering within the larger STEM disciplines, explore 10 critical practices of engineering mindset and look uh, what they might look like with youth, reflect a little bit on the importance of developing an engineering mindset, and then I'll provide a couple engineering resources that if you're interested in exploring um, with youth uh, that are available for free online. Uh, so today I'm going to be asking you a few questions throughout the webinar and would invite you to use the chat feature in Zoom to share some of your answers. Let's get started. So the first question that I'd be interested in hearing uh, from the participants is what comes to mind when you think about STEM? And for those of you who might be new to this, STEM um, here in the United States uh, generally signal science, technology, engineering, and mathematics disciplines. So when you think about that, what generally comes to mind? And if you want to type those, your responses into the chat box, um, that would be helpful. And then we'll go on and take a look. Okay, so we have some um, uh, responses thinking about science and mathematics or engineers and scientists and how these things um, connect, really doing things um, hands-on rather than potentially just sitting and reading. So the word STEM is quite commonly used, um, and I want to start by thinking about oops, um, what, are, what are the various disciplines, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, these disciplines are related in many ways, and that's why I think they've been clustered into such an acronym. But they're also distinct. And I think um, when I think about these relationships between the disciplines, I find it really useful to focus on what is the goal of a particular endeavor to differentiate among them. So when we think about science, science is a body of knowledge about the physical and the natural world. So scientists are trying to describe explain and predict the natural world and its physical properties. So for example, scientists might study when and why we see phases of the moon, determine which genetic changes produce a disease, or create models and equations that describe how fast an object falls. Engineering is the application of knowledge to creatively design, build, and maintain technologies. So engineers seek to optimize solutions for problems, needs, and desires, while also considering what resources they have and the various constraints they might be under. One of my favorite definitions is from a previous president of the National Academy of Engineering, and he very succinctly described engineering as design under constraint. So engineers have tried to figure out how people can communicate over long distances. They may design systems that maximize the flow of vehicles through the city, or they might create devices that allow people the full use without full use of their limbs to stand. Technology can have a lot of different definitions. The one that we use in the work that I do um, is that it's the body of knowledge artifacts processes and systems that result from engineering. So technologies are produced by humans to solve problems and meet needs and are the products of the process of engineering. So the telephone, the coordinated traffic lights and patterns, and the leg uh, prostheses developed by engineers are all examples of different kinds of technologies. And then finally, Mathematics is the science of numbers, quantities, and shapes and the relationships between them. Mathematics uses numbers and symbols to describe the relationships between the concepts. So mathematicians develop constructs like pi, and they have developed formulas that describe the circumference or the area of a circle. They have created imaginary numbers and articulated relationships between the sides and angles of um, various shapes. In real life, people move back and forth between these different STEM disciplines. For example, a biologist studying life in a geothermal vent at the bottom of the ocean may need to either work as an engineer or work with engineers 
to develop the device that they'll use to collect um, samples um, at the bottom of the ocean that can withstand very, very intense pressure. To study the question, they must also create a technology and do the work of engineering. So that's our very, very brief uh, overview. And now it's your turn to think about whether something is science or engineering. For each of these, if you could type in the chat window an S if you think it's the work of scientists, or an E if you think it's the work of engineers, that would be great. So the first one, uh, who develops a uh, restain resistant material? A scientist or an engineer? So I see some scientists and some engineers. I would put this most generally in the work of engineering because they're creating a product to design, uh, to, to meet a need of people. We need a stain resistant material. Um, so they're trying to figure out how can we create a product to meet that need of, um, of humans. How about detailing the process by which caterpillars become butterflies? Yep, that one is science. So they are trying to describe the way the natural world functions. Um, and in particular, as someone said, that is probably the work of a biologist. So yep, I would put that um, more firmly in the science category. How about who predicts where earthquakes are most likely to occur? Is that the work of scientists or of engineers? I see some of it. The, both, that's true. This is a little bit of a tricky one. Um, the prediction itself is probably the work of a scientist. They may use products of engineering like sensors to do that work, but generally description and prediction um, of the natural or the physical world tend to be the work of scientists. Although, as I said, these can be very mushy boundaries. Um, how about who develops a process for cleaning water quickly and safely? Yep, this one I would put it firmly in the role of engineers. It's one of the major developments that has helped um, keep people safe. How about designing a hair dryer that uses 50% less energy than those currently available? Yep, that's another engineer. It's designing a device to meet a certain need or desire. Um, those are the, the ones for today. So good job. I hope as a result of that, you have a slightly better idea about both how they intersect, but also the different goal of the work is generally what tends to um, have something described either as science or engineering. So now that we've briefly reviewed the STEM disciplines, I want to focus a little bit more today on engineering. This is a relatively recent addition to pre-K-12 engineering settings in the United States. They've only begun to attend to engineering for about the past 20 years. I was one of the first people to start to think about how we might introduce engineering to young children. Watching children interact with the world around them, I saw a lot of evidence that they are natural problem solvers and engineers. I'm sure you've seen young children at play. They design and redesign sandcastles, towers, bridges, and forts. They build them and then they knock them down. I believe that we need to foster these natural inclinations in our learning spaces, in schools and after school programs and in summer camps. What we are going to think about today is why and how we might do that. When I began this work about two decades ago, I was very interested in what children thought engineers were. At the time, that's how new the idea of introducing engineering to children was. So we had to go out and collect our own research. We asked more than 700 children in K through 12 to draw us a picture of an engineer at work and then to describe what the engineer was doing. We learned that many children think engineers are construction workers that build buildings, bridges, and roads. Note that the kids think the engineers build these structures, not design them. We also learned that children think engineers are auto mechanics. 
They are the people that you take your car to when it's broken. From a child's perspective, this makes sense. Engineering is a new word for many children. It contains the word engine. Cars have engines, so engineers must fix cars. Some children think engineers are the people that you call to fix your computer when it's broken. And then finally, we were not surprised to learn that the youngest children think engineers drive trains. So in other words, kids don't have a very accurate or complete understanding of what engineers do. To change this, I began to think about how we can encourage youth to continue to draw on their natural problem-solving proclivities while they engage in engineering. I asked myself, what kinds of work do engineers do? From conversations and research, I distilled a set of engineering practices. These are the kinds of patterned behavior that create new engineering knowledge and products. As people engage and become familiar with these, they develop an engineering mindset. Today, we're gonna to focus on 10 engineering practices that youth should engage in as they engineer. I'll provide an overview about what they are and also what they might look like as children engage in engineering. Engage with your children or child, I encourage you to find activities that allow them to engage in these kinds of practices. I also encourage the children to talk about and reflect on what they have done. This is to the work that engineers do as they solve their problems. Core practice of engineering is problem solving. Engineers don't just solve problems willy-nilly. Instead, they aim to use a systematic iterative process that can be generalized into a series of phases, and they generally call this the engineering design process. There are many different engineering design processes. They have different numbers of steps, and they label these with different terms. You need to pick a process that's age appropriate. So for young children, they may only have three or four steps because that's all their brains can handle at that time. Uh, elementary school children might use five or six, and middle school youth can start to think about processes that are more like eight steps. In professional engineering, they have processes that are dozens and dozens of steps. But regardless of the number of steps or what they're called, by naming these guideposts, you can help communicate the organizing frame and purpose for that day or activities work, and then scaffold the children through problem solving. Another core practice of engineering focuses on materials and their properties. So engineers investigate and consider materials properties. These properties affect how materials can be used and which materials are best for certain tasks or designs. So all materials have properties. An object might be fuzzy, transparent, strong, malleable, shiny, or so forth. The properties dictate how the material behaves. As engineers design solutions, thinking about which materials they can use is an important step. This is knowledge that children need to develop over time and through interaction with and ma manipulation of materials and the world around them. In classrooms, youth can start to document what they learn about materials in written forms. So properties charts, such as those displayed here, is one way to hold such information. In home-based engineering, discussing and generating properties during a conversation serves the same purpose. Naming of such materials can help kids build vocabulary. But the youth should also be encouraged to think about which properties actually matter for a given design. What does a bridge need to do? Is it important that it's red? Is it important that it's strong? Youth should be encouraged to think about materials and properties and select those that are most appropriate for what they're trying to do, the task at hand. Engineers design solutions to specific real world problems. They need to consider the context, the background information, the needs of their clients, and the implications of their solutions. Research shows that children, particularly girls and students from underrepresented groups, are more interested and motivated when they can connect their learning to the real world. So we believe that engineering challenges should use narratives and role models to help youth see how engineers can help people 
animal, society, or the environment, the context setting element can be different for different settings and ages. For instance, at the preschool level, puppets provide a friendly face when they ask students to help them solve a problem. In elementary schools, an illustrated book or storybook featuring a child who counters, encounters a problem um, might provide some kind of background. In after school or middle school settings, videos of real engineers in their workplaces describing problems they are tackling and challenges they face connect youth to the why of the activity. For many challenges, a quick internet search can surface an article or news story about engineers engaged in related problems somewhere in the world that help youth to situate what they are doing in a larger real world context. If you're engineering with your child, you might think about a problem in their life that they could solve using engineering and tackle that. Perhaps they need to organize their dresser or a drawer that they have. As engineers consider designs and context, they articulate design specifications that their product must meet. This helps them to understand whether or not the design is successful. They will think about criteria. These are requirements that the design must meet. For instance, a bridge might, um, for a bridge, these must might include how much weight it needs to bear, how long it needs to be, or how long it needs to last. But engineers also operate under constraints. There are limits that restrict their design. They will only have so much money to spend, time to create a design, and they also must consider cultural norms. Um, usually engineers need to balance these trade-offs as they optimize a solution. So they're working with both criteria and constraints, and they need to, to reach all of those for a successful solution. Another important practice for kids to become familiar with is that um, they apply both science and math to problem solving. Learning is interconnected. Engineering is really good at exemplifying this activity. It requires drawing upon, reinforcing, and applying science and mathematics concepts and practices. Engineers should use math and science to improve their designs. Engineering activities, therefore, should encourage youth to apply science and math as they solve a problem. Let's look at what this might look like. Today, the videos that you will watch are from classrooms because that's where most of my work has focused. However, the way that the children are thinking and interacting and the kinds of work that they are doing and the connections they're making is what is most important. So that's what I ask you to focus on today. The 10 year olds in this class have been exploring energy and energy transfer in their science classes. They have been introduced to the idea of insulators and conductors. You're gonna see them apply this knowledge as they start to think about how they might create insulation for a solar oven. But doing this makes, means that they really need to understand what those terms mean. We're trying to make a little pot, a little pot. You can't have that insulator because that means all the heat is going to go out and then whatever you're trying to make. No, the insulator makes it in and up with the conductors. Remember the word no conductor. Those children have a different understanding of the science of insulating um, than they did at the beginning of that conversation. And as youth need to use the information, they need to understand it more deeply. Here's another class. These youth are manipulating magnets. They've been challenged to design a model maglev or magnetic levitation train. In their planning, youth draw upon their science knowledge of magnets to inform their designs. These youth have previously learned that magnets can either repel or attract each other. Now they're calling on this science knowledge to make their train levitate or float. You'll see kids trying to figure out how to improve their maglev system that they've designed by thinking about such science knowledge. All right, so 
Is that connecting or repelling? I'm going to check if that's repelling or connecting. That's connecting. Now we will test the magnetic levitation transportation system. Which looks like it's attracting me. Sure. But what I think is happening is this side here is like a different pole than yeah. this. So it's oh. trying to slide over. Okay. On this one, repelling, but it's connecting on this one. Because if you do this. Okay, so. It's like, it's not trying to get inside there. Yeah, it's trying to go like that. So it's trying to hop itself. If we there. made it a little bit wider and lost some of the magnets that go run through the middle, it would work better. Well, I'm going to improve. Okay, there. Ready? Yes, we made it. We made it. We made it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. High five job to everyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So engineers need to think innovatively, brainstorm and analyze multiple solutions, and compare the effectiveness of multiple designs and make to make informed recommendations about open-ended problems. The problems they tackle don't have one correct answer and often allow for multiple possible solutions. The solution may depend on the context. Youth should use such knowledge and creativity to solve problems that are open-ended. They should be invited to bring their background experiences, cultures, and interests to the problem. The opportunity to, to design something truly unique makes en engineering highly interested and engaging to them. This next educator asked her first graders to work as agricultural engineers. They designed a simple hand pollinator, a device that picks up and drops off pollen to pollinate a model flower. She identifies the multiple solutions that her children designed as a highlight of teaching engineering. I think the variety of solutions that the kids came up with was the most exciting for me. None of the hand pollinators looked the same. Not even similar. They used obviously the same materials. They're very creative. They're very different. It was, I think the most exciting part was to watch them try it and then to see the wheels turning and to talk amongst themselves about how to improve it um, was priceless. So once they create the designs, engineers need to test their designs and see how well they work. They collect and analyze data to re revise and improve solutions in an iterative process. Helping youth to think about how a design performed and how it might be improved is an important role for the educator. We see a great example of how an educator can encourage youth to reflect on their designs in the next video. This is the kind of work that educators or parents or any older um, and more experienced adult can do in any kind of setting that is engaged in engineering design. Notice how this adult asks questions that prompt the youth to evaluate the designs for a sail that they have engineered to push a small boat along a track by catching wind from a fan. Let's see what happens. Hmm. So what do you think? Is it moving? Yeah. Is, this, is our boat moving? No. Your boat's not moving. When you redesign this, what do you need? To, what What do you need to change about this sail? Like, I need to make it a little bit stiffer. It needs to be stiffer. So think about what you could do to make it stiffer with the materials that we have. I don't know. His looks different too. His is different from all the others I've seen too. <laughs> is it catching? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it is. Do you think there's anything that you could do that would make it go even farther? Yeah. Like, well, this one's interesting. Let's see. Go, you put it in there. How's it going to go? Before you even start, I have a question for you. Everybody else who brought theirs back here put it up here on the top. How come you made yours go forward? So, um, there. so you made it angle forward so that it would catch the air in that way? Yeah. Interesting. Is it catching the air the way you thought it would? Happens. The air in that way? Interesting. Is it catching the air the way you thought it would? Okay, that must be the end. Um, 
Okay. So we've talked a little bit about problem solving and seeing learning as interconnected. The sales video, like the maglev video, points out another important practice of engineering. It's okay to fail. Real engineers know and embrace this idea that failure helps you learn what works. Engineers learn from failure to revise and improve their designs. This requires persevering and improving through multiple iterations. And as you saw, when the children's first attempt for a maglev train or sail failed, they recognized what they needed to do to improve it. In most engineering design processes, an improve or iterate step is built right in. So kids know right from the beginning that you get to try and try again, that engineering involves multiple iterations. When an initial design fails, that failure helps kids learn more as they improve their subsequent design. They learn that persistence pays off. As you can see from these quotes, kids also embrace the opportunity to hone their thinking and work on new solutions. They find it fun to mess up. Um, they understand how engineers feel when the things they design don't work the first time, but that doesn't give them, um, doesn't make them not think about being one. And they especially like when they get to improve the system and make it better. Engineers consider multiple ideas and multiple solutions, but they also work in groups with multiple people. So teamwork is a central tenet of engineering. You'll notice whenever we can, we try to get kids working in groups with other kids. Engineers work together to bring a diversity of knowledge and perspectives to the problem. Communicating and negotiating effectively are important skills for that teamwork. When youth engineer, the experience develops their ability to consider other people's perspective, to argue from data and evidence, to compromise, and to select the very best ideas. Let's poke our heads into a fifth grade class where youth are working on a bioengineering challenge. They're designing models of membranes that will be used in a habitat for a frog. The goal is to keep the frog's skin moist without flooding the habitat. These youth have already conducted some tests to gather data about how fast water passes through various materials, cheesecloth, felt, aluminum, foil, and coffee filters. They use this information to brainstorm possible solutions individually to give everyone a chance to gather their thoughts and ideas. Now, they're sharing their designs with each other to come up with one group design that they will test. Watch them considering each other's ideas and arguing from the evidence that they previously collected. Your goal is not just to pick your design. Your goal is to create the best design to make sure that the frog stays moist for a certain period of time. Six minutes, begin. I'll do the sponge and the cheese ball because it's going to go on top. The sponge will go on the bottom. The sponge is like soaky. But the cheese yeah. close to cook that cheese looks soaky at the best, best. But I don't agree with that because, like, you know how we, when we put the cheese clock, like, this, like, when we put the cheese clock, it like, it like, dropped all of you. Mine's different. I put the sponge on top instead of the cheese clock because the cheese cloth gets wetter. It pulls all the water to the old sponge and it, it drips fast. We can put y'all two jars together. But I put the coffee filter. Yeah, I could put the coffee filter. Let me put all of it together. Yeah, put all of it together. You can use the sponge. You can use the felt. Yeah. And you can also use the try the cheese cloth. So that'll work right now. Those are good ideas. Now, um, I will say, I'm enjoying the conversations. You guys are really trying to think about it. A lot of you are trying to compromise and work with one another. Engaging in engineering design challenges can help youth to understand what engineering is and to see their potential as engineers and problem solvers. We see a wonderful example of children self-identifying as engineers in a second grade class. They've already learned about a girl who wants to design a wall to keep rabbits out of the vegetable garden. They've also conducted a set of controlled experiments to evaluate which materials make the best mortar for a stone wall. Next, they're going to design and build their own walls and test their strength. But before do, they do, their teacher, Chantal, poses an important question. 
At this point, do you guys feel like materials engineers? Yes. Why? Anybody? Yes. That's because we already, we already did like three of the engineering design process. Okay. And we asked the question mm -hmm. and we answered what are solutions. Okay. Um, anybody else? Do you feel like a materials engineer and why? What makes you feel that way? Yes, Marcus. I think because since I've been here all three days on our material engineering process, I I feel in, engaged and, and 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 interested in what's probably going to happen left, just as a material engineer would, and think I'm really ready. You are okay. Wonderful. I think you guys are all ready too. So to grow up to be engineers, youth need to imagine themselves in such a role. Engaging in engineering challenges help children to see themselves in this way. Educators can help develop these identities by engaging youth in authentic experiences and calling the work that they do engineering. So now that we have identified um, and provided some examples, I want to give you a chance to watch some classroom footage of youth engaged in engineering to observe and reflect upon these practices in action. So take a moment to review the 10 practices for an engineering mindset. I'm going to show you a short video and ask you to think about which practices you observe during it. You don't have to memorize these. I'll show this list again after the video so that you can share out your thoughts in the chat box. In this video, we see Julie's class working as agricultural engineers to design hand pollinators. This is a formal education setting. But children in other out of school or at home settings can do very similar kinds of engineering, usually with a little less writing. As you watch this video, I would encourage you to think about where you see students engaged in engineering practices. I'll post the practices in the chat box in case you want to glance at them briefly. Okay, here's the video. We're going to make a hand pollinator. The hand pollinator needs to go to a flower and when it touches the pollen, pollen needs to stick to it. And then when you go to another flower, the pollen would what? Stick to that one. Drop off and stick there and take more and bring it to another flower. I want you to brainstorm ideas for your design. So, I have an idea. We could, do, we could do this one and then just bend it. Yeah, okay. So let's say number three, but we'll, we'll just bend number three. How about that? So, so it'll be half a mutt. It will look like your idea, but it will, it will do the things that are in my idea. Mm -hmm. So it's both of ours mixed up. Yeah, but, but how, how are we going to put the pom pom on? Put it on top. Look what we've created so far. Here's the foil and here's the pipe here. Yeah. So we're cutting that for us and putting the fur on the hand. All right, let's see if this hand pollinator works. Would you say your hand pollinator worked this time? No. What do you need to do? Good job. Here we go, testing. One, two, three. Good job. Three tap test. Okay, lift up your flower. Oh! Did it work? Yes! Well, congratulations. Give them a hand. So I'd like you to take a moment to think about the video and what you observed. Was there one or more engineering mindset practices? You can type the number or numbers that you thought were most prevalent in um, that you saw in the video in the chat box. Now here, I'll give them to you um, as well on the screen. So any ideas or suggestions about what you, what, what did you see in that classroom with that particular set of teachers and students as they engineered? So I see evaluate, designs, and iterate, definitely. Um, there's, that's one of the most fun part for the students when they get to try out um, what they've actually done and figure out how they want to make it better. Um, persist and learn through failure, yes. Not everyone gets it right the first time, and part of what they're learning is how you take something and make it better. Um, explore properties and uses of materials, definitely. Those kids needed to figure out 
um, which materials pick up. In this case, it was baking soda that was simulating the pollen. So they had conversations and figured out that fluffy stuff works better. So you saw a lot of pipe, pipe cleaners and pom-poms. Um, and they're thinking about a real world problem of how to create a hand pollinator, um, which they actually do in um, places to help with cross-pollination of various kinds of plants. And then I also see work effectively in teams. Mm -hmm. You had that classic little moment of the kids trying to take their designs and put them together. Um, these are pretty young kids, so for them to be able to even attend to the fact that the child next to them has a different design um, is very impressive at age uh, six and seven, um, and it's one of the kind of things we're trying to help kids. So, um, so providing uh, authentic and meaningful engineering experiences for youth can develop these practices or ways of thinking. But why is it important? So I wanna share a couple ideas um, about why we think it's particularly important to engage children in engineering. It helps kids understand and improve the world that they live in. It fosters problem solving skills and dispositions. It increases motivation, engagement, responsibility, and learning. Um, it improves science and math achievement, and we've done a number of research studies that show if you include engineering, the students learn the science uh, better. It increases their knowledge of possible STEM careers that they could pursue in the future. Um, and it can make educational settings uh, more equitable by giving kids actual experiences that they can then um, talk about and refer to um, in their subsequent conversations. So you can help to foster engineering mindset in kids by engaging them in some of the practices that we discussed today. There are many ways to do this. Um, you encounter problems every day in your life. There are also many engineering activities online, and I'd encourage you to look for activities that engage youth in these kinds of engineering practices. There's some that are just hands-on activities, but there's some that actually get kids thinking about and reflecting on um, and participating in engineering where you can see evidence of these 10 kinds of practices. So I'll conclude by pointing people to a few activities and sites that um, include such practices. And I'll put the URLs in the chat box as well. So one is um, teachengineering.org. Let me get that URL and put it in so you have it. Um, if you want to copy it. So that's teachengineering.org. Um, this is a digital library of many different engineering lessons for all different ages. Some of these are geared for classrooms, some are geared for maker spaces, some are geared for after school or informal education spaces, but you can get a lot of really good ideas for great challenges. Um, and then if you want to, you can modify them um, to do with children. So for example, um, here's a space or here's an activity that invites youth to design their own snazzy sneaker and the kids can watch a video and then think about how they would um, design footwear for themselves. Another um, interesting resource that I would recommend. Uh, Kristen, may I ask yep. a question? Sure. Uh, so can parents also use these uh, websites? Absolutely, these are all free. So all the resources I'm showing you today are free. So you can just mm -hmm. go to teachengineering.org um, and they have, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of activities. A lot of them are written, so they look like classroom lessons, but for instance, this one is for our makerspace. Um, so we'll just sort of mm -hmm. help you understand what activities, set a context, show you an engineering design process, and parents can think about um, how they might do that at home with their, their kids. So yes, this is available. Mm -hmm. um, this next one that I have is also available online, and it's in the chat box. So this is a little like engineering activity um, booklet. It's a free resource online that contains a number of short activities. Some of them are, are pencil and paper, like the one I show you here, where kids are thinking about how you can draw inspiration from nature to des design things like a bioengineer would. And other ones are more um, hands-on with actual materials, but this whole booklet can just be downloaded um, from this site. And if you're looking for something for your children to do um, at a time when you need a little quiet or potentially if you're in the car, I'd highly recommend this resource. You can just download it and print it out. Um, and then another place that uh, parents can go and that has all kinds of resources for many, many, um, different ages is uh, PBS. Um, so they have a series of resources. The one I'll highlight today is um, 
design squad, but they have things from preschool all the way through middle school um, that go along oftentimes with a public television show, but you don't need to see the show to do the activities. Um, so design squad is particularly geared toward middle school age youth. They have a, a number of hands-on challenges and online games for uh, kids. So for instance, if you can go to this video, you can watch a video about a video about building um, a, a bicycle um, container to take, uh, if you want to pull uh, grocery bags home, there's one on creating a, a backpack if for a, a child who's on crutches. You see over here, this week's um, wow is about creating instant ice cream. So there's a whole bunch of activities that are designed for youth to do um, at home. Um, the more younger grades, there's often a little video, like I know Little Peep is another one of their resources designed for preschool and kindergarten age children. Um, they have a number of really excellent, um, in that case, they're online digital uh, activities that children can play and games they can play to help get them thinking um, like an engineer. So for whichever challenges you choose to pursue, I'd encourage you to emphasize the practices that we've explored today. Having kids engage in these kinds of activities and ask questions that invite them to reflect on what they're doing um, in these ways can help them develop facility with an engineering mindset. Um, 10 is a lot of practices, admittedly, and not every one needs to be a focus each time. But over time and with practice, I think young children can start to develop ways of thinking that will help them approach problems like engineers by solving them in systematic ways. So with that, I'm going to conclude the information part of the project, and I will um, invite you to ask any questions, and I'd be happy to try um, to answer them. And if you come up with something later on, um, you're welcome to email me as well. Um, here, my, my email is here, and then a lot of what I've said today um, in much more detail, but written for parents and educators, you can find in a book that I published a couple of years ago as well. So do folks have any questions that I can um, help answer today? Be sure to join Tech Dev Academy's workshops and camps and also read some great articles on their blog page.